especially with giving da'wah and you know nahiya wa munkar and forbidding the wrong and enjoining the good it's especially important to have that element of empathy but also i feel like there's certain cultural things that you can do as in you can make it culturally more normal for the for people to expect advice and take advice less involvement of the ego and emotions mm-hmm. right and i feel like there's certain cultural norms like in the west you've got this thing about no judgment and don't judge me and these kind of m- mindset mentalities that seep through obviously there's some deeper issues and deeper psychology that can affect it on an individual level but i'm talking culturally i feel like there are certain things that you can do because essentially the example i give is say if you're in the office and someone brings in some snacks or treats or something right mm-hmm. and there's a lot of muslims there and you see a muslim who whether or not they're visibly practicing or not they go for the snack or treat and they're about to eat it and then some of the muslim will come and say don't eat that that's haram now what you'll find is within that setting the person who was about to eat the let's say haram ingredient or debatable ingredient they generally won't have a negative reaction no. they generally they'll be like oh thank you for telling me even if they're not visibly practicing even if they don't wear hijab whatever right because and some people they take it positively because it's you've assumed that this person will care about it enough okay. to take it on uh, so it's like a positive thing but then i was thinking replace the food replace the haram ingredient and change it to anything else and they won't there's a less of that assumption that this person wants good for me and he's advising me so let's say if someone was using bad language or something or any other kind of publicly haram act and that same person was to say don't do that that's haram in the same way right in the same kind of visceral way don't do that that's haram i'm correcting you in public because you did it in public you can imagine culturally the reaction mm-hmm. is night and day different and that's the point that i was trying to make that this this is a cultural thing and we can similarly aim to shift the culture in a positive way where Muslims have this mentality where it's like adopting the growth mindset if someone's telling me advice they're bettering me they're helping me it's not like they're telling me something i can't change if you've not got an arm and someone's constantly saying you haven't got an arm you haven't got an arm you can't do anything about it they're telling you something in the deen even if you've sinned you can get forgiven straight away there's nothing really negative in in the actual sense but yeah what are your thoughts on that's, that there's a beautiful point there's a there's a wonderful point and because as you're saying that i can just imagine that and i think i've been in hundreds of those situations as a bystander w- watching this kind of thing you know it could be a case of you know some sweets and they check the ingredients could be it could be anything you know like that you know being in the in the corporate setting as well there's there's an element of connecting to the most supreme value that an individual has and from from the muslims that i've met and that i've known i think all muslims have a special place in their heart the deen without a doubt whether they practice or they or they don't the deen is serious and it's not it's not a joke so when the advice is related to that it helps a lot particularly with halal and haram food i i believe that most muslims are very very strict on food i think it's it's more likely and the, the probably the most unlikely is haram that people would do would probably be to eat pork i believe from from my own observations So particularly where food is concerned for sure in other cultural aspects or in other practicing aspects again to be called out or to be told don't do this don't do that you know the individual needs to come face to face with their own limiting beliefs they need to come face to face with their own challenges that actually you know what it's important for me to not only be strict with my food but also to be strict with my salah to be strict with my language to be strict with the way that I dress and to spread that goodness that you have towards your food with your drink and your language and everything else because it's all halal and haram so that when someone else does it buys me they're meeting the box of my deen rather than oh it's about my food so once the individual embraces that and they spread that positivity from their food towards everything else they would be more willing to to hear that advice and again sometimes it's a two it's a two part thing there's the advisor and then there's one in receiving the advice the one receiving the advice all of us we have to be open minded we have to listen more to others you have to be more humble and just think oh how dare you say that to me brother who the hell are you hello i'm not going to take this we need to drop this and the ones where we're giving advice and we need to think about how we're doing it are we are we chastising people in public that's not pretty nice is it let's build a relationship with that guy and then pull him to the side say brother look i noticed that you did something is there something behind that was there any reason talk to people in a courteous way they will understand and this emotional barrier that they have 
he wouldn't melt away. <laughs> that, that's why like when, when we talk to people, the, way, the words that we use are very important. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim.